I have paid tribute to Pius Nkonzo Langa, and I'm not going to repeat it today. When he retired, I read the eulogy at the court in a formal sitting. When Nadell gave him an award, I was the person who was asked to pay tribute, and I did with great emotion. I'm part of the process to organize a seminar in which we're going to pay tribute to his jurisprudence. So we're going to produce a book for posterity in which we will be, we'll be paying a, a lasting tribute to one of our, our very own, and that will be in January. In a, in a conference that is meant to do exactly that. So in all fairness, I've had my peace. I've reminded all of you that he had an unbroken term of 15 years in the Constitutional Court, part of which as our Supreme Leader. I did Little Sons the other day, Sandile. I think your dad served for 49 years if you come from the time he became an interpreter to the time he retired, it adds up to about 49 years of his life serving, serving our people. He had remarkable patience, patience. You know, if you can take it step by step from the factory floor right through, and have the gumption to have the patience to see through. Our children are in a hurry, and many of our leaders are in a hurry, to gather quickly, easily. And he, he had that patience to, to take it step by step. He had amazing industry. Patience is not enough. You must work to bring to fruition he, he, he had, I've talked about this already, what I call s silent strength. You know, that quiet strength. Most of us use many words. I'm here standing for all my judicial sisters and brothers to say thank you to the Langa family to have him serve us that long, to thank him. And he has heard me say this many, many times before. At the height of my sincerity, we really would like to thank him for having managed so much in circumstances where even his very own sometimes doubted him. He was, he was special. And I'd like to thank our country for may having made it possible to have someone like him. I feel I have been given an enormous responsibility to speak on the last day of former Chief Justice Langa's journey. On the 4th of September 2009, I had the unenviable task of speaking at the funeral of Umamu Tandegilo Mangwabe at a function of a similar nature in the city. Although I understood that Chief Justice Langa was bearing the pain of losing a loved one, he maintained composure and fortitude throughout that service. I'm standing here before you to bid farewell to the former Chief Justice. You will appreciate that to give comfort through a speech to the family is not an appropriate palliative to soothe their pain. Just as the pain of the loss of their mother was hopefully beginning to heal, another one of the loss of their father and brother is again being visited on them. Born the second of seven children, the late former Chief Justice was born into a family of moral fiber with his father being a member of the clergy. Pulling himself through an arduous journey of distance education, he climbed from the lowest ranks of the judiciary to the highest. 
through what you refer to as the miracles of scholarship aid, it not only become the highest judge in the land, but also the highest court in our judicial system. As we bid farewell to this eminent jurist, I do so with the knowledge that his contributions will be emulated by many who worked with him and who saw the true dedication of a South African patriot.